Okay, this is the second part of chapter 18.3. We're talking about pHs and pOHs, and we're going to do a little more complicated calculations in this video. Um, on the other video we did, the first part, we defined what pH and pOH was and how to concentrate, how to calculate those values. In this one, we're going to introduce the uh, acid constants and the uh, base constants into the problems. We do a little more complicated ones that have to do with the equilibrium situations and pH and pOH play a part in it too. Okay, so for all strong monoprotic acids, the concentration of the acids is the concentration of the H plus ion. So H plus is the molarity equals M. So that's for the strong acids that have one hydrogen to give. That's what they, that's what their concentration. Okay. Um, so strong bases, same thing. The available concentration of the OH is the same thing. So OH concentration is the molarity of the uh, OH ion. So those are for strong acids, strong bases. The concentration just equals the molarity. In weak acids and weak bases, they only partially ionize, right? And we get those Ka values and the Kb values. It must be used to calculate the H plus or the OH. Okay, so we can go um, an example problem like this. We're going to calculate the acid constant from the pH. So have a situation like this. We have a 0.1 molar solution uh, molarity of a weak acid, hydrofluoric acid, has a pH of 3.2. We want to calculate the Ka value. Okay, so how do we do that in this problem? So we have to remember what the Ka value was, right? So we first get the equation for uh, hydrofluoric acid, it breaks up into hydrogen ions and fluorine ions. So the Ka expression equals the concentration of the products here, which is the um, hydrogen and fluorine ions divided by the hydrogen fluoride combined, right? So that's the expression for the acid constant, the equilibrium acid constant. Okay, so this is just the setup again on this slide. Okay, so if we know the pH, right, we know how to go back and forth and figure out the um, acid concentrate, I mean the uh, hydrogen concentration, right? So to get the hydrogen concentration, we take uh, 10 to the negative pH to do that. So we get 6.31 times 10 to the negative fourth when we do that. So that's our hydrogen concentration. So in this reaction, we know that these, the hydrogen equals the fluorine, and they both equal the same number. It may look like this on your calculator, 0.00632. When we put in scientific notation, it looks like this. Okay, so this is the setup, what we have here, right? We've got the two concentrations, right? But what about this concentration down here? What are we going to do with that? How are we going to figure out what the concentration of that? Well, we know we start out with 0.1 uh, molar solution. The molarity was 0.1 moles. So what? Um, so the constant sum of this changed into hydrogen and fluorine, right? The final concentration equals the initial concentration, the 0.1 molar, minus whatever went into solution here of these two ions. So it equals that, right? So but when we put this to our calculator, right? It's the the answer because this is such a small number compared to uh, 0.1. This is like three powers of 10, a thousand times smaller than HF. So for the calculation wise, we can just estimate that the hydrogen fluoride concentration is the same as it was when we started, or 0.1 uh, molarity. So we put that into our equation. Do the top, this times this. These should be exponents, right? I don't think I got a little off on there. But when you do put that in your calculator and do that, you get the Ka is 4 times 10 to negative 6. So you may want to try that. Make sure you want to work your calculator. But that's how you use the, um, the pH to get the concentration of the hydrogen ion, which equals the concentration of the fluorine ion. And we just estimated that this number is going to be really, really close to 0.1. Close enough that it's not going to make any difference to the final answer here. Okay, so the same thing with a different acid, right? We start off with a point, 
one five more solution of oxalic acid and there's a formula for it and this pH is pretty pretty low right so we want to calculate the Ka value so from the this equation we get one H and one of these ions here so this is the equilibrium constant value looks like that right the pH from the H plus Well, we want to do that the other way around. We want to calculate the H plus from the pH, right? So I typed that in wrong, but type the H plus to do that. Oh yeah, from the pH count. I said it wrong. I wrote it right. I said it wrong. Okay. Anyway, you put that. This pH is going to be 10 to the negative pH is going to equal the concentration of your hydrogen ion. Okay. So in this case, it you know it looks like this on your calculator and scientific notation. It looks like that. Okay, so in this reaction, these two concentrations are both going to be that same number, so no problem there. Okay, so that's all the stuff we had before. So the initial, the final concentration equals the initial concentration minus the H plus concentration. Okay, so in this case, right, these two numbers are only, you know, at one power of 10 apart. So when we do this, this is a significantly close enough that when we do this subtraction, we're going to get a different number. This is not very close to 0.15, right, when we do that calculation there. So we have to um, put that number in our final concentration of that. So this acid broke up a little more into uh, H plus and its ion. It's... Uh, conjugate um, base over there. So this reaction is only one power of 10 smaller, so we need to do the subtraction, right, to get the final calculation. So we plug all those numbers in. These are the same two numbers we have before for the concentration of the H and the H2, HC2O4. And our little subtraction from the other slide gave us that. Calculator does its magic, and you get the Ka is that. So it's a pretty high Ka. Right, so that's why this this number was um, significant. We didn't couldn't estimate it. Okay, so another problem on the same lines is what's the pH, right? When they give us the the molarity of carbonic acid, and they give us the Ka this time. So this time we know the Ka, and we're working back to find the pH. So we know this reaction breaks down into uh, hydrogen and this ion over here. So our Ka is equal to hydrogen ion plus that divided by that. Okay, so this is the products over the reactant. Okay, so we don't we know that this these two are going to be equal. So I can put an X to represent the constant the uh, concentration of the hydrogen ion and the HCO3 ion. So they're both going to be X, right? And then we get the concentration of the uh, bottom one here, the hydro uh, carbonic acid. It'd be whatever that was, whatever its initial concentration is, minus whatever went into solution. Okay, but when we look at this Ka is really small, 10 to the negative seventh. This is 0.2. So I can we can make the estimation that this X is going to be really small compared to um, 0.2, right? Because this has to be negative seven. So this times this, these are both going to be like negative three, negative four, something like that. So that's going to be, you know, at least a thousand times, a hundred times to a thousand times smaller than that. So when it's that much difference, we can just estimate that that molarity didn't change. Okay, so it makes that little thinking about it makes our problem a lot easier. It goes on like this. We put the numbers in, 0.2. Okay, so put the point 0.2 there, same thing again. Ka is x squared over the molarity, right? This is a common theme for a lot of the problems you'll have. So that's why I wrote it there. So especially when, you know, the Ka is pretty small, then this estimation can work, especially when it just breaks up into two ions. Okay, so x squared, 0.2 times 4.5 gets that. To the square root, okay. That's our con that's our hydrogen ion concentration. So the pH, we got to take the negative log of that to get it back to pH, and so the pH is 3.5. 
Okay, so the last little bit here is that experimentally we could do also find the pH with litmus paper. There's different litmus papers that change color at different pHs. Or what we use mostly in our class is we use a pH meter um, to do that. So we just put the pH meter right in solution and it reads out what the pH is. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. So um, hopefully I was helpful on calculating these a little more complicated calculations. Um, do the uh, problems down below and I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.